special one. Uh, if y'all know anything about me, anything about my history, anything about my taste, uh, I'm somewhat of a historian, a connoisseur, some would say a sommelier, uh, some would say just like an overall just weirdo when it comes to Southern rap music, Southern rap music culture. Uh, I was raised in Savannah and, you know, grew up in Atlanta. So I saw a complete evolution from the 90s to the 2000s and watched the crunk movement kind of uh, germinate and, and come from Memphis and, and take over Atlanta and uh, so many different outcomes and, and, uh, and, and just overall cultural revolutions coming out of that. So when you tell a guy like me that there's somebody out there fully dedicated to reviving that culture and keeping it alive, I'm of course, I'm, I'm gonna wild out a little bit. I'm gonna become obsessive. So when, uh, when this person's album came out a couple nights ago, um, let's just say I almost fucked up the whole whip to that. Um, and I'm really glad that I have insurance, both, both vehicular and medical, um, because I'm probably not going to survive this summer with crunk stars being out, but I'm really excited to talk to Duke Deuce. How you doing, brother? What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Man, I'm pretty good, bro. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited, bro. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Yeah, the the albums the albums out. Everybody's really fucking hype about it. How do you feel on your end, man? Like, honestly, bro, I'm. I want to say I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised at the same time. Like, I've been new. I've been knew I was the truth and everything, but the way people like receiving it is crazy. Like, talking about like. I was trending on Twitter because everybody was talking about the album and everybody was talking about the single as well with Glorilla. Shout mm -hmm. out to her, man. Yeah, and I, I was on YouTube earlier today. I ran the video like 18 times since it came out, but it was uh, number 14 trending on music. And I mean, that's like, that's, that's fucking huge. So I'm sure you're like super excited. I'm sure Glorilla is super excited. Can you talk about like how you two linked up in the Memphis scene because, you know, I don't know if mo how most people found out about Glorilla, but I found out about her through, uh, through Set the Tone, which, which Hit Kid uh, produced with, you know, just a whole gang of really talented Memphis uh, women rapping on it. So how did that connection happen between you two? Well, it was pretty much the same way. Um, Hit Kid pretty much uh, linked us up. Um, Man, I was chopping it over my manager one night and she was like, man, you know who will sound good on that uh, song? Cause I already had the song, like, bro, I recorded that song about a year ago, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think it was earlier this year when we, we, we thought to put her on the record or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she hopped on that record way before she did, you know, F and F. Interesting, okay. Yeah. So, you know, pretty much Hit Kid connected us. So were you just kind of holding the record like, I keep this in the pocket till there's the perfect woman to rap on it? Um, I, I don't know, but I think, because really I had a second verse on it. Mm -hmm. I was just going to put it out like that. But I just felt like, you know, we just felt like we it needed that, that honor, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it was perfect for the female. Then in my head, I, you know, I directed the whole video or whatever. So in my head, I instantly start thinking about the chicken head vibe. And, yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. I yeah. Yeah. So I just knew that was going to make it pop. Yeah. And could you talk about like the Project Pat relationship too? Because it's so like laced throughout your whole music. I mean, your first, you know, big commercial viral hit is a is a project pat beat are you guys like super close after the remix were you guys close before or did it did it happen after or is in memphis just this place where like you grew up and project pat was just like buying a loaf of bread at your local grocery store and you saw him all the time <laughs> nah it was pretty much like i was doing my thing i was going crazy and um you know i 
I just, I really can't, cause bro, life moves so fast when your career start rolling, bro. So some some things is like a, a flash, like it just happened so fast, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of I kind of forgot how I got in contact with Pat. But mm-hmm. all I know is, bro, hopped on the record hits, the hits after hit joint. Mm-hmm. And we just stay connected after that. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. Every time we see each other, this shit, I look at him as an OG. You know what I'm saying? So every time we see each other, it's love pretty much. So, yeah, we pretty close. Yeah. And do you feel really strong about like bridging that gap between the new and the old in Memphis? Is it something that kind of happens naturally? Or do you feel like you're out there like actively trying to force that gap to close? Well, I'm like you, bro. I'm I'm a I'm a historian too, bro. So, you know, with me, that was just a natural thing. Like, bro, I love the that authentic Memphis sound. You feel me? So, I guess to me that was important. You know what I'm saying? So, oh no, I just had to go ahead. I just had to go ahead and reach out to the OGs. You know what I'm saying? And you know they influenced me, so it just made sense in my mind. You feel me? Right, right. Yeah, it's. It's been super interesting to watch because, um, like I was saying earlier, like I was, I was growing up in Atlanta and I had to be maybe like eleven or twelve when, you know, in in Atlanta the crunk movement, the way it came down to to Atlanta from Memphis started with just like fight music, you know what I mean? It was just like yeah. some of the some of the most low fi you know, rudimentary, just nothing ass beats. And it was just folks talking about fighting. And, you know, you would go to Club Crucial or go to any type of club. And the uh, the, the culture was so not based on, like, fashion and, like, what you were wearing. It was, like, who was going to get the most energy off that night. And I kind of – I'm really interested to hear, like, how you grew up with that in Memphis, what was different about it, and what you're trying to bring back about it. Yeah, bro, like, see, that's big for me because it's like, bro, I miss them days, bro. Like, honestly, bro, I hate lounges. I'm going to be 100 with you, bro. I hate lounges, bro. You know what I'm saying? These couches and shit, man. I be ba- I be about to fall asleep, bro, like, for real. Bro. You know what I'm saying? I got, I need the energy. So, yeah, like, when I was growing up, it wasn't if nothing could, but a I big ass... If I could press a button and blow up every hookah, like ever, <laughs> like just the machine, the hookah, just blow every single one up at the same time, I think I would. Man, facts, bro. Like when I was growing up, bro, it was nothing but dance floor, bro. Like that's all you needed dance floor and a bar. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that yeah. shit used to be wild. Like, bro, you know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, it was pretty much, shit, it was a lot of gang banging and, you feel me? Niggas gangster walking and shit. The <laughs> shit that I be doing, they they be thinking it's they be thinking it's it's really dancing. I mean, yeah, it's dancing, but that shit got deep roots in the city. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the gangster walk. That's how the gangsters used to walk. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. just like LA got crip walk and shit like that, where Memphis got the gangster walk. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, all that a part of it, and plus twerking. <laughs> so <laughs> motherfuckers go, man. You gonna go to you gonna go to club, have a good time back in them days. You know what I'm saying? I really want to bring that back. I'm thinking about opening up my own clubs. You really should. I think that there's a big fucking vacuum for it now. And you know, I get kind of it's, it's, it's no shade to anybody, but you know, you even when I go and I, you know, I go to festivals or I perform or watch other people's performances, these festivals is mostly these white kids, you know what I mean? They're like 15, 16, and they're, you know, they doing the whole moshing shit, but I don't think people understand that that was like, you know, in the in the 90s or 2000s, you know, tear the club up and throw them bows and ludicrous and all that shit. Like, oh, it was we, really, got, we got we to go back a little bit more. Shit, Memphis been doing this shit since the 80s. Yeah, no, facts, facts. And that's why I'm like, I got to talk to Duke because you have a, you have a specific history that I can't. Yeah. I can imagine the way that you experienced it. You know what I mean? Because Atlanta got it. You know what I mean? But in the eighties, yeah. Atlanta was still making fucking Miami based cocaine, Uncle Luke music, and yeah, this was yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I think that like that is something that fully 
needs to come back. I don't know how it comes back, but I'm definitely tired of uh right. I'm tired of seeing niggas in that like, you know, niggas who wear that like that flat brim fitted cap with like metal studs on it, and then they be having like <laughs> yeah. just you know what I mean? The type of nigga who I know just came there to stand and not have any kind of fun and that whole culture just has to die somehow like and i and i think you got to do it i feel like um the 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 music like the way shit is going going right now i think the crunk movement is finally about to take over bro like i'm seeing it bro like you know what i'm saying shout out to uh glorilla you know what i'm saying like that was much needed bro a female yeah. some females to come out with a hype ass song song like that Fuck nigga free. You know what I'm saying? It's just going crazy. And it, it is a crunk song. You feel me? It's chanty yeah. and catchy and simple. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it was much needed. And ever since then, bro, I keep seeing a group of females making crunk songs, bro. Like, it's really about to take over. This, yeah. is, this is my time, bro. Like, no cap. No, for sure, for sure. I think uh, we got to take it back to, like, and I was talking to a, a friend about this recently that I think, you know, we all know that like history kind of moves in circles, you know what I mean? And uh, back in the 2000s and the 90s, even in the 80s in Memphis and Atlanta, like everyone was just really OK with having a white tee on from Foot Locker, some Jabos or whatever oh, your uh, jeans of choice was, some fucking white Reeboks, which I saw Glorilla had on. Nah, and that was me. <laughs> that was me. Oh, that was your Reeboks. <laughs> yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, there was just such a simplicity to where it was like, you didn't need to be rocking like Margella. You didn't need to have all this like high class. You could be fresh with nothing. And it was the way that you elevated to make that look cool. You know what I mean? And and it was, you know, motherfuckers was going to like their local flea market and, and coming out with polo on and then, and then shooting whole rap videos like that. And it was so kind of low tech. And I think... Uh, that's the one thing that you kind of are bringing right now where it's like you don't need to do all of this extra extra shit you can be fly but really the the music should be about fucking turning up and, and like blacking out on somebody <laughs> facts bro i feel like i ain't gonna lie like in my head bro i, I be looking at shit like bro the monkey see monkey do shit like the shit that everybody's just constantly doing bro that shit just be it gets boring to me, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this ain't no, I'm not bashing nobody or nothing like that, but like, God damn, like somebody got to do something else. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Everybody, ch- everybody trying to chase the same spotlight. And I was never that type of guy. Yeah. For real. I set trends, man. You feel me? What, uh, <laughs> who, who is an artist that you are, and you can be as, you can be as out there with this one. You know what I mean? I, I I think that it shouldn't even be confined to rap, but is there an artist out there in any genre, rock or rap, punk, that you're like, I have to get them over here and make something crazy? Mm. You saying like, you talking about as far as like a collab or what you mean? Yeah, yeah, collaboration, an album, whatever it might be. Mm. Shit, that's a good question. He kind of caught me off guard. No, man, you got me with that one. Because you got the Rico, you know what I mean? Rico makes perfect sense. Glorilla makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? I've I've, I've seen Drake kind of like, kind of, you know, encroaching. And, and I wonder if he's, has he reached out yet or has it not really happened? Man... <laughs> I don't know, man. He's look, bro. Told me spring, summer, we gonna do something. I ain't heard nothing yet. Ah, but you know, I feel like you know Drake gon' he gonna come at the perfect time. You feel me? I don't think I was actually supposed to say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, bro. Hey, hopefully you hear this shit and be like, yeah, I did say that. I'm sure he's fine. I think, I think 
if anything, now after seeing his album come out, Drake is on his uns uns right now. Yeah, and, exactly. and, he, and he's like, let me get my uns uns out. Let me be on my Robin S. And then yeah. <laughs> probably gonna <laughs> we're gonna circle back and get to the crunk shit. But I'm I just know he's just like he wants to be, you know, cocaine 80s studio four, it seems like right now, and which is perfectly fine. But you are on a complete other side of the spectrum where you're like, let's fucking crash a car into a brick wall and then gangsta walk on the way out. Facts, bro. And and while we talking about Drake, uh we do got a crunk ass record too. Like, let me just go and put that out there. Drake sent Drake Drake sent me the beat. You know what I'm saying? And I oh, just shit. knocked it out and he fucked with it. And I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how he gonna come on the motherfucker, but oh he oh, so he sent you the beat, no verse, and then just told you to get on this and then he's gonna come. Yeah, facts. And I sent my shit back. He sent flames and he was like, bro. You hard, like for real. So I love that nigga. He's so petty. He was like, mm, "You get on it first, and then I'll see how you do." So I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go first, and then I'll go. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Do you feel and you feel good about you know that being like a step and that cosign? I feel like you're at a point where you know you don't necessarily need uh, a cosign from anyone. You have such a loyal and, and ravenous fan base, but how do you feel about, you know, moving into the Drake space and making that collaboration happen? Man, I mean, I'm excited about it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This, this, this some legendary shit right there, you know? Somebody did make a great point. You might got to make a song with, uh, with Drake daddy. Man, OG <laughs> shit. Cause he's, he's from Memphis, correct? Yeah, facts. Have you ever met Dennis Graham? Um, yeah, I actually have. I don't, but it was like early. It was like real early in my career. Like when I dropped a whole lot of like. Okay. That's okay. around the time I met him in um L.A. We just kind of said what's up and kept it pushing. He's fire, bro. He be out at the club with midgets. Like he is. He's a he special in the club dude. with what? He be in the club with midgets. He a special dude. I really fuck with him. He just. <laughs> Dennis just does exactly what he wants to do. He, Man. I, I want to grow up and be exactly like that. <laughs> Man, on everything. His suits, everything, like <laughs> the mustache, the do rag. He's fucking amazing. Smooth. He's smooth. Is that who is who is? Uh, I want to do some like. I want to pick your brain and really find out who is the most slept on and it can be old it can be new it can be whatever but slept on memphis hits that you were like man how how does the world not know about this why is this so such a hidden gem uh because i was on i was on youtube recently i mean this was like the pandemic but still recently um and i had no idea that uh yo Gotti was rapping when he was a little kid and went by a little yo and i, I found this whole mixtape that he had and uh the shit was incredible so is there anything else like that that you're like oh yeah you need to know about this yeah like uh got it, um had a record um called life mm-hmm. like that's when he was like low-key on his crunk shit you know what i'm saying like god it was on some crunk shit back then you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i be telling folks about that type of music all the time like bro everybody kind of found out about god it when he he went just strictly trapped but nah bro it was crunk as fuck yeah, he is that normal? Is that like the typical thing in Memphis, or was it to to start in that like super young? Mm, I think so, shit. Cause, cause I think kind of like everybody had studios and was doing their thing. So, shit, like me, shit, I grew up in a studio, and I'm sure a lot of other people have too. Right, right. No, I'm looking at this Yo Gotti album art right now for Life, and it looks absolutely insane yeah he was just on some dope he was on some dope boy crunk shit you know what i'm saying what year was this like what era yo Gotti is this that had to be that's like the early 2000s it probably be like 2001 two yeah. something like that yep it says 2002 2003 right here that's fucking crazy yeah facts what were you doing in that era like when 
how did you feel as a kid when you saw the Memphis seed of crunk move to Atlanta and become like the crime mobs and little Johns and the little scrappies? Like, how did that feel for you in Memphis? Was it like, was it, you know, was everybody like rejoicing? Like, Oh shit. Like more people are catching on to this. Was there yeah. a lot I mean, of over? What was it? We, um, we pretty much love the shit. Like we was, we was, we was, crunk, we were cranking up out this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? But it was like, at the same time, we kind of like wanted our flowers too. Mm-hmm. Like that was like a big talk in the city. Like, damn man, like if we could just stick together, we could be putting our shit on the map. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it was shit. Motherfuckers weren't sticking together around that time. Like, <laughs> yeah, what was what was going on in Memphis circa 2003? No, I feel like it was like Ed Man for themselves. Right. You feel me? Like every man for themselves. Atlanta help each other. Like they still do to this day. Like they help each other. They put each other on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have that going on in Memphis now, but it's still a lot of division. Yeah, yeah, and you seem to kind of like float completely past all of that division, and you know, pretty more than often you're helping like unify the city because you're. You know, you're rejuvenating a sound that the city invented. Um, yeah, facts. how do you how do you feel about that, and how do you maintain that? Um, well, shit, I don't know. I just look at shit. I guess I'm on some OG shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what I want to do. That's always what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to do it. I really want to see everybody make it out of my city, bro. Like, that's important to me. Mm-hmm. For real, and I plan on bringing some people out. You know what I'm saying? Put some people under my wing. Yeah, who are you? Uh, who are you kind of looking at in the Memphis landscape that you're like, yo, I'm good now. I need to introduce y'all to so and so. Well, uh, pretty soon y'all will be hearing a lot of um, from Glockiana. Oh shit! Female, female artists. And she also um, coming for the crown, the queen of crunk. Really? Yeah. Who's got Who's got queen of crunk right now? Is this Is it Lachat? I mean, I'm not sure. I never. I don't, I'm not gonna say, but I never really heard no one just Claim screaming me. the queen of crunk like that. You feel me? Yeah. So, but originally, I would think Lil Chat gangsta boo. Right, that was like the main. They were in the running, both of them, to to see who was gonna get it. Yeah, facts. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't think they just really did it like that because maybe they didn't want to be against each other. You know, you know how they kind of could. Like two people can't say they the queen of this, <laughs> right. the same right. thing right. unless they just, you know, what I'm saying agree to it as sisters. Yeah, so. exactly. No, that was that was pretty mature of them to both just be like, you know what? We're both fucking good at this. Let's not even make it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So Glock, but, but Glockiana is about to, she's going to stake her claim and say, no, I'm it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. What uh, what should we listen to from Glockiana? Because I, I think I've heard the name. I've probably seen a video of hers or two floating around on Twitter, but what's like, What's her style? What's what's a song that we need to hear? Um, y'all definitely need to hear "Stomp on Them." That is Stomp already. On I'm them. already there. <laughs> I can't quite remember the rest of her songs, but she got some dope ass freestyles, bro. Like for real, like she a beast, and she she a beast, bro. Oh wow! Okay, we're super early on Glockiana. Facts, yeah, and this is my artist. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, what is it with maybe you could speak to this because when I when I heard the Hit Kid song, he got two of them with um Glorilla, Slimeroni, uh I can't even I can't remember the rest of the group. It was so many it's like <laughs> like let me see, let me see. It's uh Aliza Gloss Up, Glorilla, Slimeroni, and K Carbon. Yeah. Why why are there so many really really good women rappers in memphis what is it specific about the city that you think 
allows that relationship to happen. Because, I mean, every city produces good women rappers and good male rappers, but the amount that Memphis has per capita is kind of blowing everybody else out of the water. So what really is that? Yeah, you gotta um, you gotta be born in that that you gotta have that get some of that Memphis water in you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's something in the water. It's something in the air. It's just something about Memphis, man. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I. It, it's it's got to be something because I've just been watching and I'm like, what the fuck is going on down there? And it feels like there's such a kind of like camaraderie. Like it's not. You know, because some other cities are very like male dominant where they're like, no, nah, you got to be this to be in the studio with me. But even watching you and Glorilla and like Hit Kid and the rest of the girls, it seems very brother sister. Is that would you agree that that's what it's like when y'all make music together? Say that one more time, bro. It feels like in Memphis. The relationship between the women artists and the male artists feels very brother sister like is that. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. or is that accurate? It feels like other cities is very like male artists dominated where they're like, this is your role in the studio as a woman. And then you can climb up through here. But y'all just kind of like it's like, no, everybody's running through the gate at the same time. Yeah, it, yeah, it, do, it does seem like a, a family type of situation now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because us guys, we've been doing our thing a long time in Memphis. You feel me? And it's been kind of like a break. Not well, I ain't going to say a, a break, but like. Because it, it was female artists out of Memphis doing their thing, like Juice Fruit. Like, she was going crazy, bro. Like, and she still go crazy. But, you know, for the uh, new ones, it's, yeah, it seems like everybody's sticking together. Yes, we should. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, facts. No, it's, it's really a, it's a beautiful thing to watch, I think. And I think it kind of ties in with what you're talking about with the whole culture and the crunk culture because, uh, I mean, if we really like get deep into it, like the crunk shit to me feels the closest cousin to what it felt like to grow up in the black church. (laughs) Thanks. Where there was always kind of this moment that you knew that was coming up in church where everyone was going to lose their fucking mind. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? And and, and the, the... you know, the keys get crazier. They start going up octaves and the drums, the drums start getting a little bit faster. And you're like, all right, now I'm about to show out. You know what I mean? It's For real. Like, and For it feels real. like the closest thing. And I, I think like, um, I don't know, I can't really put words to it, but would you agree? I mean, did you grow up like that in Memphis? Were you like heavy in the church as a kid? Yeah, I was, especially when I was younger. Then I just kind of, uh, you know, Went a different direction. Of course. You know what I'm saying? I love God. Don't I don't want nobody to think that I'm <laughs> like that or that like that. I believe in God. I love God. I, I I guess I'm just not into big on religion. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm yeah. more on the spiritual tip. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't think anybody was like, oh, Duke said he's going a different direction. He's a Satanist. It was just like pretty- <laughs> <laughs> You'll be surprised, bro. <laughs> You'll be surprised. I, I, mean, I see a lot are, of crazy comments. I mean, you are from Memphis, and three six did come out pretty fucking wild with that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, facts, facts. <laughs> yeah. Was I'm that was there. that like a big uh, was that a big stigma for you growing up, like, and and for your family and people around you? Because I know I had to, I had to sneak three six CDs into my house. Like I had fucking like i had crack on me like i couldn't i would hide it like in a mcdonald's bag and then put the mcdonald's bag <laughs> like in my baggy ass jabos so it didn't really look like nothing was in there and you know and pull it out and it was like shining when i would open i'd be like oh my god i finally get to listen was that kind of your experience or was everybody just kind of like chill about it your parents and stuff I mean, my parents, not my grandparents, though, because I, I actually like I was raised by my grandparents. OK, Um, but now, nah, like my, you know, my pops, he was doing the same shit. So it was like, right. That was normal for us. Mm-hmm. Just to be like, oh, uh, yeah, we we listening to three six as like father, father, son bonding, listening to uh, 
<laughs> nah, not necessarily. <laughs> like Pops, when I was dealing with, like with Pops, he did his own music. So that's pretty much like most of the time you hearing his shit. You feel me? And his shit was dark too. Got like it. all they shit, they did sinister music as well. You feel me? What was your what was your dad's music? Is your dad's music like out there? Can we like hear it? His uh, I know one of his most legendary songs is uh, South Parkway. Um, he produced that track for Gangsta Black. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So he was mostly producing, but rapping too. Yeah, facts. Okay. Damn, he did it all. He did it all. Engineer all that type of shit. He so did it. just everybody's daddy in Memphis <laughs> was rapping or producing at some point. It's safe to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you have kids, dude? Yeah, I got a little girl. Do you do you see them already gravitating towards the music and like and, and feeding off of your energy in that direction? Or are they already like, is your little girl already like, ah, you know, I want I'm trying to do tech. Come on now, bro. Like, facts. She already into music, bro. Yeah. <laughs> she uh she got them, was taking piano less lessons. Man, she was hitting notes at an early age, like got good rhythm. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the dancing part, but we're gonna work on it. But <laughs> as far as keeping up though, like yeah, she she's definitely, definitely there. So on the next tape, we're gonna have a we might have a beat from from Duke Deuce, Deuce, little girl. We might have to actually do that, bro. You just really gave me an idea. <laughs> and I already got her. I already put her in the studio. Let her do a little some on um, a song, but we might have to uh, try this beat thing. Yeah, <laughs> for real. That's awesome, man. And uh, once again, man, great fucking work on the on the album. I was listening to it the other night, and I'm just like driving, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna fucking die driving this car right now and it's it's just the perfect summer album perfect car album um the the collab with rico was super exciting can you talk about making that connection there because y'all are both uh clinically insane people when it comes to like the rage music and comes to that thing so was that just like a natural yo we both do this let's just knock it out yeah, bro. I, um, I pretty much, you know, it was pretty much kind of like how I did with Glow Real. I just, I had a song already, and she, my manager, um, brought her up about her voice being on it. And I was like, hell yeah, that's a good idea. So boom, I hit her up, sent the tool. She said, oh hell yeah, I'm gonna knock this shit out for you. Mm-hmm. I was on the ass about it too. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> She started taking a little too long. I was like, yo, 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 what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see. She said, nah, I got you, bro. On everything, I got you. She said, that bitch back, man. I went crazy. It's so fucking good, man. Y'all just, y'all bounce off of each other so fucking well. And it's, it's, you know, it's just great to see shit like that. Yeah, man. So, um, what are you excited about the most post album? Is it, you know, seeing more fans kind of gravitate to your music is it seeing like current fans kind of go crazy off of it you know more attention from bigger to artists me, to me it's the whole experience bro like yeah. honestly bro i went and listened to that bitch when they dropped like i didn't hear them songs already like mm. you know what i'm saying i honestly bro like on the way home bro i'm riding it's late night i'm bumping that motherfucker for the first time after it dropped Bro, I done drove past the house, went around the block about three times <laughs> until I finished that motherfucker. I listened to everything straight through, no skips. And it's I enjoyed no I'm a fan of myself, bro. No cap. You have to be a fan of yourself in this world first. Because if you're not, who going to do it? Facts. What? What's next? For Duke Deuce, you know what I mean? Like you have this steady body of work that's growing. You have this amazing fan base. You're number 14 trending on YouTube. Your music is trending on Twitter. You're putting on, you know, a crazy amount of artists. You're about to put on more from from Memphis. What's like, what's big picture for you in, in guiding this crunk revival? Like what is the next step? 
I mean, I feel like the next step is really pretty much making it a movement. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, I'm putting the artists on. Uh, I am looking at some more people, but I don't really want to, you know, get into that just yet. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And just really, it's pretty much just still, bro. Honestly, bro, I just really want to keep putting out music, bro. And I don't plan on taking no breaks this year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm already in the lab, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'll just be consistent, bro. You feel me? You're already you're already kind of planning your next step for this year alone. Yeah, facts. I, it's the the plan is to take over. Yeah, yeah. And by take over, do you just like you want to just see more people on this wave? It, it, is that what feels like a takeover for you? Where it's like yeah, too wide. We all agree. You know, this summer we're tearing shit up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just everybody's just on this wave. No more sleeping on the king, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people were sleeping. And, um, you know, I just want to be in these folks' face. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. How do you feel about, you know, it, it feels like the the current tide, you know what I mean? It, it's kind of this race now because of what Drake and Beyonce are doing. Like, they're putting out, they're doing their unt unt shit, which I am. A huge fan of too. I fuck with house music. My Detroit folks, my my Chicago folks. Shout out to all of y'all. But I am a Southern guy, so I have to say, if it's a debate between the two, I'm on my Southern shit, on my crunk shit. Uh, how do you feel about the summer being this like house music slash <laughs> slash crunk collision? You know what I mean? And who do you think is gonna come out on top of all this? I mean, honestly, bro. I think there's room for both, but mm-hmm. as far as the streets, <laughs> <laughs> the crunk shit, you know what I'm saying? The crunk, the crunk movement is definitely going for the win. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, those those two styles can actually merge on some real shit. They really should. I mean, I don't know who's really dipped into that. 3-6 definitely kind of has some shit in that in that vein, but somebody really got to come out. I feel like you and Drake, alongside the one that y'all got, y'all need to make a crunk house song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be crazy, bro. Throw all the motherfuckers this off some some kind of fake Molly and uh. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> nice <dude>. fake Molly. <laughs> um. Where are you at right now? Are you in Memphis? Is that where you chose to kind of celebrate the album release or where where in the world are you? Uh, I'm in Atlanta right now, but I honestly, uh, I plan to celebrate it in LA. Um, but you know, this this boycott going on mm. um, in the airports kind of threw it off. So we had to postpone the uh, release date. Okay. Yeah, so um, hopefully it'll be this weekend. Got it, got it. Uh, release party out here in LA. Yeah, thanks. That's awesome, man. And, and what is a Duke Deuce release party like? Like, what are you in there? Is it just a a gangster walking extravaganza? Are you are you chilling? Or are you just like you're tearing it up again to the whole? You, you remember the Crunk Fest parties? Of course. <laughs> that's what that's what that shit gonna feel like <laughs> when I get done. For people who don't know about uh Crunk Fest, can you can you elaborate on that? I mean, a That's Crunk a Fest is pretty reference. much a, you just you better get the fuck ready. It's it's pretty much like it's pretty I feel like it's kind of like raging almost like, but it's just strictly that. Mm-hmm. But then again, they do switch it up. You had your um the crunk music that you actually twerk to, that females twerk to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, it's different. Rams of that crunk shit, but everything crunk though. <laughs> and then crunk you know they gotta slow it down too. You know what I'm saying? They gotta slow it down too. You know, like yeah. uh lovers and friends type shit. You might hear pretty Ricky at the crunk fest for sure. Yeah, you will hear pretty Ricky at the crunk fest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Motherfuckers grinding and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas fucking on the lounge furniture and you hear me slow dancing and shit. <laughs> The uh head handstands and all that crazy ass shit. 
were you were you big into the the R and B wave coming up? Are you still that guy? Are you on your your smooth and sultry nah, shit? I fuck with the R and B. I fuck with the R and B. I wasn't doing no slow dancing and no shit like that, but <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not. We was the type. We would have. We we would gangster walk to an R and B song. Oh my god! You were gangster walking to Omarion. Oh, nah. I went gangster walk to Omarion, but uh, <laughs> more like the uh, what's the giant um, uh, fortunate by Maxwell. Okay. Yeah, like nigga, a gangster walk to some shit like that, bro. Wow, gangster walking to uh, Jagged Edge. <laughs> 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 Damn. Nah, genuine, like genuine, some usher joints or some shit like that. Okay. Like fat, it's it's, it's a really certain flowing. type of R and B you can do it to, bro. It gotta have yeah. it. I don't know. It gotta have that, that, that right cadence and that funk to it. That groove. Yeah, it's gotta kind of like you could gangster walk to Confessions by Usher. <laughs> yeah, you can. Them ain't one of my favorite joints to do it to though, but. You can yeah, definitely yeah. do it today for sure. We might have to see that video. Have you have you put out a video of you gangster walking to some R and B yet? Nope, but you I'm damn sure gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you understand like how many old head R and B weirdos would be like, Yes, today is my day. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely do that. Just be on the lookout, y'all. I'm gonna be on the lookout for that one. <laughs> real that's awesome man the gangster walking shit the crunk shit man man is there anywhere in the world that you're like uh man i want to go over there and see if they if they fuck with the crunk movement any foreign countries where you're like i'm gonna go over there and no matter what their cultural landscape is i'm gonna make sure that they they're crunk by the by the time i'm gone like africa and shit ghana Oh, uh, damn, Japan. Yeah, facts. Japan would definitely, I can already see them. Yeah, they already be fucking with me uh, overseas. I be seeing them. They dance to my shit a lot. Yeah. China, Japan, uh, Africa. I didn't seen plenty of shit, bro. Yeah, man. I, I mean, Africa. We could just go ahead and say Africa pretty much invented crunk. Like <laughs> all the shit that we're doing in Memphis, Atlanta, like everywhere, it, it literally just is African shit. You know what I mean? Like you watch how motherfuckers, you know, make music and dance. And I, I want, I want to say that the um, the indigenous people of America have been doing it. Damn, that's yeah. No, that's like if honestly, you think about it, like yeah. the gangster walk. The gangster walk was big on. Um, we called it the G train. Uh -huh. They do it a lot, like when they rage and shit. Like they open up the circle and they spin around, like yeah, go in the circle. Well, yeah, like we had this. We got this thing that we do. Well, we do that too in a like in a real bouncy way. You gotta kind of like swing your shoulders with it, and you know what I'm saying. And it's just the same thing that the indigenous people did around the campfire. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's our culture. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying, well, um, so most black people from America were black Indians, right? We were already right. here, but people right. just don't really know, right? Right. How do you uh, feel about you know keeping that piece of culture alive? Is it is it just through you know continuing to push the crunk shit? Are there other ways in which you're like, I got to keep this, you know? keep this part of my whatever it is in your spirituality or your you know your history alive through that i don't know bro everything's just natural to me like you know what i'm saying it's like i'm pretty much doing the shit that i grew up doing and the world just feel like it's cool as fuck you know what i'm saying it's it's not really too much behind it but i just plan to take over with it <laughs> you feel me Mm -hmm, mm hmm Yeah. Are there uh are there other cities in America that you are like, I want to tap into to their sound more and, and kind of fuse it with what you're doing? Uh, hmm. I mean, yeah, like honestly, just about any and everything, because 
honestly, bro, I'm a music head, so I like all different type of shit. Like motherfuckers wouldn't think I listen to, I listen to this shit. You feel me? So I'm always thinking of ways to create some shit, like the house crump music. Like this shit gotta be done. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's that's one that we really, really need. Do you and Hit? So I'm I'm assuming you and Hit Kid work pretty closely. Like, does he produce a lot for you? Is it? kind of just here and there like what's your relationship like oh yeah man bro like brothers bro like come on now like my dad and his daddy did music together wow yeah um it's a song called untouchable duke duke nitty doula which is hit kid daddy doula and nasty nardo that motherfucker hard too okay yeah okay. but yeah this shit we always linking up you know what i'm saying so you and him, it's like you you've known each other since you were little kids. So it's just like we yeah. actually didn't, bro. Like that's crazy. We actually mm. didn't. I don't know where his kid was when I was in the studio with his pops and my pops, but we never really met as kids. Mm-hmm. We just kind of ran into, into into each other when I started doing my thing. You feel me? Right, right. And then we, I found out he told me who his daddy was and. You know, it just kind of happened like that. What advice would you have for a young artist who's looking up to do do that right now? And they're like, you know what? Fuck all this fashion shit. Fuck all this, you know, Givenchy and standing around smoking hookah shit. I want to I wanna be a crunk star too. I want to fuck shit up. I want to throw a Molotov cocktail in the club. What advice <laughs> would you give them? into into getting started and staying true to that and and how did you what are some ways that you got started that you well, could impart on someone well first to be a crunk star you have to not give a fuck what people think about you just got to be yourself you know what i'm saying and if i wasn't being myself I probably wouldn't be doing the type of music i'm doing now i probably just do what everybody else doing so it's going to take for you to be the um the outcast at the moment you know what i'm saying that guy that's different you know what i'm saying he like everybody kind of like yeah you doing it but we doing this so we ain't paying you no attention you just got to keep doing this shit fuck this shit you feel me mm-hmm. and then eventually you take over because why you the send you the you the trend you the trendsetter you know what right. i'm saying so that's all you got to do it's simple y'all Crank the fuck up. Be a crunk star, man. Be yourself. What's a better word between the two? Pussy or coochie? Uh, everything matters to me. It's so hard to decide. I hate it's it's a tough making one to decisions. Do. But we can, we can right, discuss so look, it too. You don't have to I'm just a, pick. We can discuss it. I'm going to say it like this. It depends on how I'm using it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm mad at somebody, this guy, I'm not finna call him a coochie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna hit him with the word pussy. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. But you I gave think some much needed context to that. That's valid. Right. I think pussy. I I think niggas like us, we gonna use pussy the most. Right. Pussy yeah. kind of just ride with every situation, situation almost. You know what I'm saying? Pussy got m- many, many uses. Yeah, it's more mature too than coochie. Yeah. Just pussy, saying coochie. Pussy as a word, it's like rubbing alcohol. You can kind of throw it on anything and it'll fix it. It'll, it'll help it out. You know what Facts. I mean? Pussy Facts. like Robitussin. You can put it on. Facts. It's, it's It's like chicken. Yes, it's an everyday thing. You could just always come back. A pussy <laughs> as a word coochie coochie has very it's limited use but it's so powerful yeah facts coochie facts. And, and, and coochie is a sillier word yeah it is you know what i mean facts facts but, but, but I, I don't know which one wins as the better word. I know I would say pussy more and I'd say coochie less because it has less use, but which one overall is the better word? Because to me, coochie is like foie gras. 
it's yeah. it rolls off the tongue. It's it's you know what I mean. It's it's supple. It's uh salivating. It's a lot of different uh, flavor notes on the word yeah. and and pussy. It it's, just kind of hits you. Yeah, pussy. It seems like it's it's more dirty. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying you can you know you can use that a little bit more. Right. Right. It's more dirty, you know what I'm saying? Coochie. I'm I I use that Johnny Blue Moon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Blue Moon, depending on the situation. <laughs> you know the thing about coochie is you can only really use that word with your boys. You know what I mean? Like I you wouldn't really, I don't know, I wouldn't really be with a chick. And be like, yeah, let me get some of that coochie. Get some of that coochie. We're both going to just start laughing, which is fine. But I don't think I'm going to get no coochie from that. Yeah, like, man, when you going to give me some pussy? Like, give me some pussy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you say, if you tell a female, like, yeah, I'm going to come over there and eat that coochie. Like, <laughs> she... <laughs> She might get weirded out. Like, if you text a woman, I'm gonna come over there and eat that coochie. That screenshot is gonna you, be on. <laughs> your, you're gonna go on Twitter and see your text in a screenshot on her face. You you sound lame as hell. You just come like that though, like, coach. Like, I'm gonna come out there and eat that coochie. It's more. It, it, it's it's coming out kind of like pedophile. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna come over there and eat that coochie. Sounds threatening. Like, sir, back up. Why are you so excited? Like, weird as hell. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. But such a refined word. This one. We just talked about coochie and pussy for a good little minute. Man, I mean, this is what I do. This is <laughs> <laughs> typically, and I was like, look, I I want this show. Uh, Cause you just put an album out. I'm like, we got to talk about Memphis. We got to talk about the album. We got to talk about Glorilla, Hit Kid, talk about your life and music. But man, at the end of this, I was just like, I just want to talk about stupid shit. Like, <laughs> man, oh God. See, I'm the same type of person, bro. No cap. Once I get my homework done, I'm like, all right, what's the better word? Boo boo or dookie? You know what I mean? Like, less. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> Google Dookie. I don't. I don't even lie. I don't use now one of them words. You don't say boo boo. You just say shit. Yeah, I say shit. Damn. Yeah, I might say doodle. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I might hit him with a doodle. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, but, nah. but boo boo just so boo boo feel like it's petty, bro. Like. It's petty, it's silly. When I say boo boo, I feel like I'm a little kid in the '90s, and I just got <laughs> time watching Saturday morning cartoons. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like boo 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 sounds a little stankier to me too. Like, it sounds dry, <laughs> like they dry boo boo. You know what I'm saying? Because you know when water kind of makes it a little bit more um, acceptable, but. Dry boo boo, it. yeah, yeah, it just sounds a little bit more funkier to me. <laughs> yeah, boo boo, boo boo, yeah, it's them two syllables together are just <laughs> they just perfect, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it is, but if you were somewhere, try this out, dude. Next time you're in a really important meeting, <laughs> don't say. Yo, I gotta go to the bathroom, or yo, I gotta go take a piss. Just and and it's gotta be a room full. Of, <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be a room full of just the most socially awkward, just label whites, and you just gotta be like, "Excuse me, y'all, I gotta go boo boo," <laughs> and just see the reactions. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. every time you say that, every time I've said that in a room full of people, it's like a gunshot which just went off. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that. 
<coughs> just and try I'm it to do it too. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> real crunk star shit. <laughs> That's how you get crunk. Yeah, facts. So you got a boo boo in a label meeting. That's crunk. Yeah, facts. What? Give a fuck. What do you do to entertain yourself besides making music? Besides the gangsta walking, like, are you a are you into movies? Are you like a big TV person? Are you into video games? Like what other media is Duke Deuce consuming? I right, so boom, I got this weird thing about playing Call of Duty. So look, yes, right. I haven't played Call of Duty in probably six months, bro. Wow. But eventually i'm gonna start playing it again and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be playing it for about six months straight like i don't know bro i i don't know if it's got if it got something to do with my mo i have different modes mm -hmm. i have a mode where i'm not playing the game and i have a mode when i'm playing the game then i love stranger things i love what hello yeah i can hear you Somebody called me. Stranger Things is my shit, bro. You so you've been watching the new season? Yes, I finished the new season already. I'm waiting on the next one. How'd you feel about the the new season? You know they spent like thirty million dollars per episode. Yeah, it seems like the newer season. Um, they spent a little bit more money on. I can tell they spent more money on them because I put my pops on Stranger Things not that long ago. And I mm -hmm. actually watched it with him like I haven't watched it before. Mm -hmm. And now I realize that the graphics was poor back when they first started, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, one would say the graphics in season one were boo-boo. <laughs> yeah, facts. Facts. <laughs> the graphics in season one was, was boo-boo, for sure. <laughs> But they got better. They, they, they're spending a lot of money. Are you a big sci-fi person? That's kind of like the vibe I'm getting. And I mean, the Call of Duty thing makes sense when I think about, you know, the Duke Nukem cover is super like military vibes and, you know. Yeah. I'm not a big, I'm actually not a big sci-fi person. I couldn't stay in sci-fi growing up. Really? Yeah. The graphics was just too weak for me. I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. You weren't you fucking with like saying? Star Wars or Star Trek or. You know, yeah, I, I I rock with Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? I rock with Star Wars, but I ain't care for Star Trek. Like when it when it when that joint came on, I was like, yeah, this some shit my daddy don't watch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was something about it. It was too, uh it was too plain for me. Or too something. Plain. Yeah, yeah, I could get that. There wasn't a lot going on in star trek you know you had to wait for some shit to happen it was yeah like, they did a lot of talking and at that age i didn't know what the hell they were talking about like that so yeah yeah you were like man blow some shit up yeah facts were you like a big cartoon person are you like still a cartoon person bro i i still watch um the regular show bro that's my shit. okay yeah no that's that's probably top five that shit funny as fuck, bro that's probably top five for sure I feel yeah. like Duke Deuce, Duke Deuce needs a a voice acting gig. I feel like you would kill it as a cartoon. Bro, on God, bro. On God. We damn near got to do one, bro. We might need to do that. We could come up with it right now. Let's go. So, all right. All right. Tell me what your character... Wait, all right. No, let's start. Let's start for real. We writers. Let's get in the mm -hmm. mode. What's the setting of the cartoon? Mm. City, city, or or uh, what's the time and the place? Um, <clears throat> let's go. I know it's daytime. Mm -hmm. We gonna have to, we got We gonna have some nighttime scenes too. But I know it's daytime. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can go city for sure. It's in the city. What city? Um, we just gonna. Boo Boo City. Boo Boo City. All right, boom. All right. We got it. I'm already, yo, yeah, I have so many ideas already. All right. Uh, are you a human character or an animal? Uh, 
I could be an animal. Okay. I could be an animal. What kind of animal would Duke Deuce be in the cartoon world, though? Oh, uh, I'd probably be a grizzly bear. All right, boom. So I got it. New cartoon coming 2023. Bear in the Boo Boo City. Hard. Yep. Triple B's. Bear, bear in Boo Boo City. Come or, on, man. Or, or Boo Boo City Bears. That Boo-Boo might City Bears. Boo Boo City Bears kind of go crazy. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. And it's catchy. Yeah, it's got to have that. Muffles are going to see that across their TV and be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and and they going to click on it. What's going on in Boo Boo City, though? What, and what is the grizzly bear? What is his... Uh, What's his main objective? Is he an artist? Is he a is he a fighter? Is he a a warrior? What's his thing? Um, let's fight on artist. Let's go with man. Fuck that. Man, he could be a college student or some shit. Okay, a college student grizzly bear in Boo Boo City. Yeah. Okay. College student, cause I, you know, what I'm saying we gotta have them college vibes going on. You know, what I'm saying drinking. Okay. You know, what I'm okay. saying that he doing shit. He doing dope ass shit, where he got the the, the hoes and you feel me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So he's drinking this party by is it is is Boo Boo City. Is the college there? Is it like Atlanta College, like 2009, like Travis Porter type college? Or is it like, you know, is it like college campus, like, you know, super prestigious? Like, is it a prestigious college or is it just like a party college? Or, or no, somebody says it's an HBCU. That, that'd be fire. That's hard because we don't even got that. We don't got shit like that. So let's go HBCU. Okay, yeah, HBCU in Boo Boo City, and it's a grizzly bear. Are other people animals, or is he the only animal, and it's a bunch of humans? Um, hmm. Let's go mix. Let's mix it all up. So some people animals, and some people humans. Whoa. Okay, this is giving me like gumball vibes. You seen gumball? Um, how old is it? It's pretty, somebody get, probably have to correct me, but Gumball probably dropped, I want to say 2014. 2014. It's, it's pretty, it's newer, but it's probably been out like five or six years. Mm, I think I've heard of it, but I might not remember it. It actually came out in 2011. Yeah, I was, I was kind of close, 2011, 2012. But yeah, it's like a, uh, so the Gumball, it's like a cat. I think it's a cat and a goldfish and everybody else in the world will be like a T-Rex. But sometimes it'll be like uh, a floating like gas bubble. And then like somebody will be like a, you know, a random VHS tape. It'll just be all kinds of objects. I think I know what you're talking about, bro. It's crazy. And it's like all these different styles of animation. It's crazy. Mm. Bear in the big bear in the big boo boo city might got a. Uh, we might got oh, you just added another. You added another B. I did bear in the big boo boo city. Yeah, facts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just go write the script right now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hit you with some ideas here and there because I be like shit be flowing, bro. I've been thinking about a cartoon for the longest, so you know what I'm saying we'll just keep tapping back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a uh, it's a tight idea. They gotta have. He got to have rival schools. Wait, does he play in the band? Because it's HBCU. Hmm. Do he want? Do we want to play in the band? Because it could. We could dip into some motherfucking drum. Yeah, yeah. Like on God. Like and they playing dope. It like the music got to be fire as fuck. Yep. Like we got to make that shit. Yeah. Motherfuckers oh, got to be able to relate to this shit. Yeah, you know, like when the. When the black HBCU bands, they be covering like Maxwell and like Omarion and shit like that. Like we gotta yeah. be that. We gotta Hell be yeah. You no know? facts. <laughs> facts. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start go. Uh, I'm gonna go hire writers right now and just start the writers room and uh, and 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 you gotta come write a script and and put your voice on wax. 
<laughs> yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> 